Good evening, everyone. What an amazing event. The dance, the art, the uh, symmetry and the rap, the amazing presentations by our speakers, the poetry, just phenomenal evening. And so I'm just, I just feel blessed to have the opportunity to um, participate uh, in this event tonight. Well, there are a lot of different things I could talk about, but what I thought I'd do tonight is to essentially tell a story. I think it's an interesting story. I think it's an important story. Um, and the title of this story, keeping with the theme of faith and science, is Miss Daisy, the Deacon, and the Doctor. Miss Daisy, the Deacon, and the Doctor. So Daisy is a 47-year-old African-American woman. Uh, she's a member of Translation to Transformation Missionary Baptist Church. <laughs> She's grew up in, she grew up in the church. Uh, she's a member of the choir. She's a member of the women's board. She uh, is on the pastor's anniversary committee. We all know a Miss Daisy. She's got two beautiful daughters, 120 and 117. They were also raised in the church. So one day, Miss Daisy is in the shower, and she feels something that just doesn't feel right on one of her breasts. So Ms. Daisy is a small business owner, so she has some insurance, so she decides, you know, I need to check into this immediately. Why don't I go see my doctor to see what this is? So she decides to go to the doctor. The doctor agrees and says, this is, feels abnormal. Why don't we go ahead, do some ultrasounds, and do a biopsy? So four or five days later, she comes back. She goes to see her, her referral physician. They do a biopsy. About three or four days later, her doctor calls her and says, hey, I'd love you, for you to come in so we can talk about the results. So she has to take off time from work. She goes to the doctor, and she gets the news that she did not ever want to hear. Daisy, you've been diagnosed with breast cancer. We all know a Miss Daisy. So Miss Daisy is, of course, distraught, upset, um, and really doesn't know what to do. So what is Ms. Daisy typically going to do? She's going to go to the people that she loves and trusts. So that Sunday, she goes to church. And right after Sunday school, she's walking down the hall, and Deacon Isaac comes out of one of the rooms, says, good morning, Daisy. Good morning, Deacon. Deacon, you got a minute? I'd like to share something with you. Also in the hallway... There's a young 25, 30-year-old PhD scientist who's doing a lot of work in cancer research, I like me, um, and, and kind of feels that he knows a lot about cancer. And he, he, he's not eavesdropping, but he actually happens to inadvertently overhear the conversation between Daisy and Deacon Isaac. And Daisy says, Deacon, I just found out earlier this week that I've been diagnosed with breast cancer, and I just don't know what to do. Of course, the deacon is consoling and prays with her. And she says, but deacon, there's also one thing that I'm struggling with. One of the things that the doctor said to me was that because of the type of breast cancer I have, he's recommending that I participate in a clinical trial. And the deacon responds quickly, don't let them experiment on you. The young scientist is flabbergasted that the deacon would have the audacity <laughs> to actually think that he's qualified enough to provide that kind of information to Daisy. But he's smart enough to say, I'm not going to go talk to Daisy because this is her personal information. I wasn't eavesdropping. I inadvertently heard the conversation. But I think I do want to go talk to Deacon Isaac. <laughs> so he sees Deacon Isaac later that morning and confronts him, says, Deacon Isaac, I can't believe, I, I inadvertently heard your conversation, I cannot believe that you would say what you said. Don't let them experiment on you. And discouraged her from actually considering a clinical trial. Those treatments could actually uh, be a means towards a cure for her, which is absolutely accurate. Deacon Isaac said, well, wait a minute, young man. 
you may not be old enough to have, have, have known about the Tuskegee experiment. Where are my young students at? Have any of you heard of the Tuskegee experiment? Well, the Tuskegee experiment was an experiment that happened in Tuskegee, Alabama, where African-American men were tricked and fooled to participate in a research study. And instead of them getting benefits, the doctors injected them with syphilis to understand the effects of syphilis on human physiology, primarily neurological function. So they, they actually purposefully injected a horrible sexually tra transmitted disease into these men to study them using them as human guinea pigs. Deacon Isaac says, don't talk to me about why I said don't let them experiment on you. I know about the Henrietta Lacks story. My students, have you heard about Henrietta Lacks? Henrietta Lacks was an African-American woman in Baltimore, was diagnosed with cervical cancer. The doctors at Johns Hopkins University collected a sample of her cells and they happened to grow amazingly well, better than any cells they had ever uh, 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 utilized in research. They started using those cells for all types of research. A number of cures were actually developed because of those cells. Those cells have also been commercialized and are sold by companies to, for profit. And the family has essentially gotten nothing out of it. They never asked her if they could use the cells, never asked the family, and the family has gotten nothing out of it. So don't talk to me about why I told her that. So the young scientist was educated that morning by the deacon. But he said, but deacon, I also want to educate you on something. There are now protections against those types of atrocities. There are human subjects protections in place that provide patients with protections of their privacy, their confidentiality, they have to get information on the risks and the benefits of participating in a research study. So we have new ways of doing this in a way that are far less harmful to the patient. And also, if African Americans want to benefit from health and medical innovations, we have to be more, uh, 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 um, we have to want to participate in these trials more because all of the data that's coming out of clinical trials are coming from white individuals meaning that the results may not be generalizable to African Americans. So we have to get over the fear of participating in research. And the deacon was very, very uh, thankful that the young scientist was able to educate him on some of the new things that were happening. So the deacon said, son, here's what I want to do. I would love to set up a meeting with you, me, and Miss Daisy. And we're going to bring some prayer warriors too. So the deacon called Ms. Daisy and said, Ms. Daisy, there's a young man who knows a lot about cancer research, and I think he can actually help you better understand your results so that when you go back to your doctor to make a decision, you'll be much more well-informed about the situation and how to move things forward. So Ms. Daisy agrees to go to the meeting. So they go to the meeting. They, of course, they bring some pound cake, some fried chicken. <laughs> The prayer warriors come, they start the meeting in prayer. So Miss Daisy is in a very good environment, a rich and spiritual environment to allow her to accept and receive this information the way an African-American woman might feel best receiving that information. She, she hands the information to the, the young scientist who immediately sees triple negative breast cancer. He also sees that she actually has a genetic mutation in the BRCA1 gene. So she's carrying a gene that predisposed her to developing breast cancer. He also told her that triple negative breast cancer tends to occur much more commonly in young and premenopausal black women, and that it, it leads to higher death rates in black women. He also told her that triple negative breast tumors that arise from BRCA mutations actually respond to a new class of drugs called PARP inhibitors. Meaning if a woman has a breast cancer, it's triple negative due to BRCA mutation, they have these new drugs that work like gangbusters on those tumors. And that that's the clinical trial that the doctor was trying to get her to participate in. So Daisy, everyone leaves that meeting in a better place than when they came into the meeting. Now Daisy has the information to go out 
go to her doctor, be more informed, tell him what she wants to do in a way that's likely to help her. So we all love a happy ending, right? So Miss Daisy gets on the PARP inhibitor trial. The drug is incredibly effective against her cancer. And five years later, she's cancer free. So I tell this story essentially because we really need to do a better job of integrating the community, faith-based organizations, academia, industry, government, policy, everyone. We need to build, let's call them community health trusts, uh, key words, community and trust, where we bring and we exchange knowledge and information on how best to manage these situations so that the next Miss Daisy who comes along has a support system in place. Right? So that she's informed and, and she knows exactly what she needs to do when she goes back to her doctor. But this is not how the story ends. Daisy's then, five years later, Daisy's 20, at, at that point, 20 year old daughter is now 30. Miss Daisy gets a text one morning Mom, I took a shower this morning and I think I felt a lump on my breast. That's the story for another day. Thank you. Ha, ha, ha.